Hi, for those that don't know me, I'm Virginia Walton and I'm an executive burnout coach helping corporate women uh, make sure there's time for them so that they can continue to be productive and successful without burning out or feeling overwhelmed. Prior to starting my coaching practice, I spent 24 years in the banking and finance industry where I worked my way from teller to small community bank to senior vice president of a $27 billion bank by the age of 38. I'd love to tell you that it was super easy. It was hard. A lot of hard work. Um, I nearly burned out. But along the way, I had the fortune to work with several great coaches who helped me succeed professionally. And I've also learned a lot um, about how to take care of yourself and continue to succeed. So that's my, my goal now is to help other Others do the same and have even greater success and feel even better than I do. So today, how to make the holiday season a time of change rather than anxiety. So this week, both uh, Advent and Hanukkah started. And I thought this was a great, uh, they um, have a great meaning to leverage regardless of your faith or your your spiritual beliefs um because hanukkah is a celebration of the rededication of the temple and advent is a season of preparation in the christian church um for catholics we also started our new liturgical year this week so and today's december 1st right so there's all kinds of new and renewals happening this week as we come into the holiday season, which is in full swing right now, right? Between Thanksgiving last week, Hanukkah, uh, Christmas is 24 days away. It can be very stressful. Because in addition to that massive to-do list um, with holiday preparation and, and stuff, you will probably also have a ton of stuff to finish out the year at work, right? Um, so it's easy to feel stressed and it's easy to fall into bad habits and give up good habits. Well, what if we looked at it rather than, Oh my God, I have this massive to do. Um, how am I going to get it all done in the next few weeks? We looked at it as, wait, we're preparing, right? You're shopping, decorating, we're cooking, we're cleaning for those gatherings that we can have in our homes again. Um, wrapping cards. You had to get the picture for those beautiful family cards to send out. Uh, it, it can feel, it's, it's all preparing. It's preparing for the celebration, the gathering with family. Even if you're not a, a person that practices any faith. I have, I have lots of friends who celebrate Christmas as a time of coming together as family and friends, right? That's the meaning. So instead of freaking out over, okay, I've got all this to do, plus we probably have to schedule in Christmas concerts and holiday dance recitals and tree lightings and different holiday events to, that your family does to go see beautiful lights and um, pictures with Santa and all that fun stuff, right? So it's overwhelming. And it's easy to be like, this is not a time. This is just, I got heads down, get everything on the calendar, get everything off my to-do list. Well, think about it as I'm preparing. You really are. Even at work. All the things you're doing now to finish out the year are preparing for next year, right? Finalizing budgets, finalizing headcount needs, doing performance reviews so your teams know what they need to work on, setting goals and objectives for the year. So as an organization, as a team, for your individuals, for yourself, everybody knows what they need to be working on come January 2nd, right? Because hopefully you have January 1st off. You're preparing for a successful 2022. You do that every year, right? You prepare for a successful holiday celebration with your families and friends. You prepare for a successful year for your organization, your team. 
what are you doing to prepare yourself for success for you, right? We get so caught up in all these other demands that it's very easy to say, I'll get back to exercising and working out in January. I'll get better about what I eat in January, right? I went through a period of transition this time of year last year, and I totally did that. I'm going to enjoy, I'm going to overindulge, I'm going to have lunches with friends and enjoy the baked goods of the season and wine with dinner and I'll turn it around in January. Well, that's one approach. That is a strategy. But as I prepared for this, I thought about another strategy that I used to see in business. I was in a function where there was big push at the end of year for volume, right? Closing deals, hitting your production numbers. And so there was often two approaches as we came into December. There was those who they wanted to end strong. They pushed to get every deal closed and funded before December 31st, right? They are calling every client. They are, they are driving everywhere to get paperwork signed, right? They are nagging. They are pushing. They are selling. They are persuading. And they are finishing strong. And they've drained their pipeline. They're drained. There's nothing. They're starting the new year with nothing. And that gave them a very successful end. It's one strategy. Then there was one that was often kind of frowned upon. It's called sandbagging. Now, I think if we apply this to life, it's actually a really good approach. It's a good strategy. You have your goal for the year. They met it. They worked hard. They met their goal for the year. And they said, okay, I've met my goal. Whew. They didn't push to drain everything out of their pipeline. They started the new year running. They weren't starting at zero. They were starting ahead of the game. So now what if we did this in life? Instead of just, eh, I'll start in January. I'll worry about me in January. I just have to get my to-do list done. I've got to get everything off this list. I've got to get everything done. I've got to do everything, schedule everything, be at everything, cross everything off. It's exhausting. It leaves nothing for you, right? And you're like, I'll worry about me in January. I'll go to the gym, which is crazy busy in January. I actually hated the gym in January when I used to go seven, six days a week. I'll, I'll start watching what I eat in January, right? I think there's become a new trend for sober Januaries, right? You know, um, maybe it's sober February because we indulge through the holiday season. Let me, let me work that out of my system. That's a strategy. But what if you started now? There are four weeks left to this year. And if, as I said that, you cringe thinking, oh my God, there's only four weeks. Do you not know what I need to get done between now and then? I get it. But I'm going to challenge you on that. If it was four weeks till your vacation, which maybe in this case it is, when it's four weeks out from vacation, it feels like an eternity, right? You're like, God, it, you have four weeks till I can take a break? It's never going to get here. You know, I, I think about my friends who are teachers and how, how stressful the last four weeks of the school year must be because the kids are getting antsy. They're done. The teachers are drained. They've given it their all, right? It's probably feels like forever those last few weeks. Let me tell you the secret. Four weeks is 672 hours. Whether you're approaching it as Oh my God, I'm never going to get through the next four weeks or I have all this stuff to done. I, four weeks isn't enough. It's still 672 hours. Either way you approach it. So which seems better? How about something in the middle? Like, okay, I've got four weeks. That's a good amount of time. Maybe I won't completely hit my goal. If in January, your new year's resolution was I'm going to lose 20 pounds. Four weeks, yeah, probably not enough to do it healthy. You might be able to do it, but it's probably not in a really healthy way. So, okay, maybe you can lose five or four. If you lose four of that 20, you 
and you make the goal 20 pounds next year, you already have 20% done. You're 20% into your goal. If you use the next four weeks as how to prepare for what you want to do and you start working towards your 2022 goals, you could be 5 10% into your goal. You're starting the year like those sandbaggers I used to work with. Pretty cool strategy, right? Right? It's how you approach it. So, I get it. This time of year, it, it feels hard to make time for ourselves and take care of ourselves. Well, one, if you're striving to hit those year-end goals and get stuff done, you need to be at your peak. It's four weeks. So how are you going to be working at your best? By being rested. By eating good food so you've got good energy, right? By making sure you're focused. Those are all things you, you got to work on, right? Stressing, freaking out. You're going to not meet your deadline. You're going to produce poor quality work. And then you're just going to be frustrated and tired, right? So you need to prepare yourself so that you're making the most out of the next four weeks and you're bringing your A game rather than the like B minus, right? Because then you're just going to beat yourself up. So, if we're looking at it as time prepare, what are the things we need to focus on, right? And I get it. Listen, when I looked at my schedule this week, I was like, wow, it's a busy week. As a matter of fact, I shared with a friend, well, Monday night we have this, Tuesday, blah, 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 right? And there's something every night from Monday to Saturday on our calendars, right? At least on mine. I think my boyfriend gets a night off somewhere. I think he's good tomorrow night. Whereas I have two meetings. And when I rattled all this off, and that's of course in addition to, you know, my business. My I have to manage my family's farm. And I have that to-do list of holiday stuff to do and was trying to get fall decorations down and Christmas decorations up and shopping and, you know, getting the turkey all used, right? So I get it. It's a lot. And when I rattled off what was going on this week, my friend's like, oh, that's too much. It's too much. And I get that. It, it is a lot. But if you're my people, you're listening, you're probably like, oh, yeah, I've got the same schedule, right? I get that. So it just takes a little extra time to prepare, right? If I just kind of rolled into the week, it would be a shit show. Yeah. I'll tell you because Monday didn't start the way I planned and Monday didn't go the way I planned. And so I had to play a little catch up. Okay. Not ideal, but so that regroup, refocus, plan. Okay. Where is there the time to make sure I had a few minutes of quiet to focus every day? That's a non-negotiable, right? So. We need to focus on what to get done. Don't focus on everything that's overwhelming on your list. Take time. Prep, right? I've read a lot of self-development and leadership books. Great leaders plan ahead, right? Think about it. Probably on your to-do list at work is planning for 2022. Finalizing strategy, budgets, timelines, what projects are going to be approved for funding, right? You're planning, you're strategizing. Do you do that for you as a person and in life? So yeah, so I knew I had this crazy busy week. Okay, you have a crazy busy week. I get it. I took some time Saturday because that was when I had time. Sunday was going to be too crazy. And looked out and mapped out my week. Said, okay. Here's the things on my calendar. Here's the things I need to get done. Where can I have the time? Where do I plan them so that I'm still getting time to take care of me? So I'm bringing my best. I'm bringing my best to my clients. I'm bringing my best to my community um, in the roles that I serve in. I'm bringing my best to me, right? What's going to serve me? 
if you remember, right, as kids, when we learned about fire safety, it was stop, drop, and roll, right, if you catch on fire. You can probably visualize. Luckily, we didn't have to do drills because that would have been funny, a bunch of kids rolling around on the floor. But it's very visual. Okay. And the idea was roll, stop, roll, was to, the way to put out the fire, right? So if you're coming into these four weeks feeling like your hair's on fire because of those incredibly long to-do lists, both from a personal and professional uh, basis, I get it. So we can apply that. No, I'm not saying fall on the floor and roll around and everything will be fine. If that works for you, great. If you're back in your office, it might you might get some funny looks doing that. But stop. I mean that. Be still for a few minutes. M Monday, my day started completely off. I couldn't focus. I was like, Look, do this, do that. Wait, you know, I lost time. How do I make up? And I'm like, stop. Be still. Take a deep breath. Okay. Now, think logically about what you need to do and re, regroup, replan, right? So when you're feeling pulled in 8,000 directions over the next four weeks, stop. Be still for a moment. Take a deep breath. Focus. Okay? Drop. No, don't drop to the ground. Don't drop on the couch if you're working from home and hide under our covers. Drop all the crazy messages running around your head, right? It's easy this time of year. You drive down the neighborhood and everybody else has all their decorations up and their tree you can see and you're like, I don't even have my tree yet. Don't beat yourself up. Everybody's pace is different. Whatever messages that are you're telling yourself that you're behind, you don't have enough time. 672 hours. That's a lot of time. It's a lot of time. So if you're sitting here telling yourself, I don't have enough time and you're freaking out, picture uh, the rabbit, Alice in Wonderland. I'm late, I'm late. Did he get anywhere? No. So whatever noise is in your head, let it go. It's not gonna help. It's just gonna consume a big chunk of those 672 hours. And you're not gonna get anything out of that. It's time lost. Roll. Again, if rolling on the floor, stretching you out, feels good, great. But what I'm talking about is the curveballs. It's going to happen. Stuff's going to come up, especially if you're on the East Coast, right? We've got weather. <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen. It's going to interrupt your plans. It, you can't plan for it. You can try. But it's going to happen, right? You plan to go for... You know, a tree lighting and it starts to sleep. Okay. Maybe you don't want to go. If you're the one planning and throwing it, you got to go, right? Don't freak out. Roll with it, right? I'm going to go back to my example Monday. It started horribly wrong. Okay. I could have just sat and stewed in the wrong and gotten nothing done. Or I say, okay. Shit happens. Let's roll. Let's figure it out. You know what? It worked out. It all worked out. You know? Something was, it was supposed to have a meeting and then somebody's like, oh my gosh, I'm still traveling back from the holidays. Okay, plan B. And it worked out. We'll get it done. We still have time. It's all good. It's all good. You know? Last night, I was teaching my religious education class. We had a plan. Kids were going to decorate the trees. We thought it would take longer. Apparently, 7th and 8th graders decorate trees really fast. It's like, especially when it's paper ornaments and you don't really have to worry about things falling and breaking. So we're like, oh, 
we got 20 minutes still of class. We got to figure this out. Maybe it was even 30. Okay, you roll with it. Found some more decorations. Built it into a lesson. Uh, you know, could have freaked out and then stood there. And then the kids would have gotten nothing. And they probably would have just gotten into, you know, trouble because they weren't being occupied. You roll with it. And you know what? It wound up being a lot of fun. So don't stress when things don't go as planned. Life never goes as planned. Roll with it. So remember, as you're approaching this crazy busy time, these remaining four weeks, use them to prepare for next year. When things don't go, roll. You've learned, you've learned something. Oh, now, now we know. All right. It's only going to take 10 minutes to decorate the tree. Okay. We'll plan accordingly for next year. You've got four weeks to set yourself up for a fabulous 2022. So don't stress over the to-do list. Use this as a time to plan. You're prepping. Keep time for you so you're moving ahead. And with that, um, as I always remind you, if you're ready for change, but you're not sure how, you don't know how to use these four weeks to start planning for next year, or you know what your goals are, and you're like, I keep setting the same goals and I haven't achieved them. I need to do something different. I'm here to help. So let's connect. Drop me a comment. Uh, check out my website, virginiawalton.com. And remember, maybe you didn't need to hear this right now, but you don't know who of your friends might. So by sharing, you might be helping somebody more than you know. With that, be well.